An unruly homeless woman was forcibly removed from the bank by the manager, who was shocked to see a scar on her forehead and had a shocking revelation about his own history the security guard abruptly told the disheveled woman, Mom, you have to leave immediately, as she tried to gain entry to the bank for the second time, as she explained her son's critical financial need, the woman said, I can't leave. I need to ask for a loan, with an air of hesitant but determined severity, Ronald, the manager, stepped out to find out what all the fuss was about, as the security guard informed him, this woman refuses to leave and says she wants a loan, the guys looked at her with a mix of sympathy and contempt, everyone was staring at Ronald, waiting for him to make a choice, and the bank's operations came to a standstill, excuse me, ma'am, loans are difficult to secure here, what do you have for collateral? The woman was taken aback by Ronald's level-headed question, her innocent. Question, can't I just get a loan if I promise to pay, attracted even more curiosity from the bank's employees and customers, Ronald said, no, in a tone that was almost contemptuous as he explained why collateral like a house or car was necessary, aware of her car's twin role as a means of transportation and a place to sleep, the woman's pleading betrayed her increasing desperation. Ronald was unfazed and told her to go, mentioning the branch's usual high-class customers and big deals, the Woman's panic intensified as she desperately grasped onto Ronald's jacket, pleading for help, however, he firmly rejected her, his distaste evident as she collapsed to the floor, exposing even more of her disheveled appearance, but then Ronald noticed something he hadn't seen in a long time, a scar on the woman's forehead, as the security guard approached the woman, Ronald reached out and put a hand on his shoulder to stop him, I'll see her out, Mr. Daniels, the guard said, Ronald was taken. Aback when the woman suddenly rose to her feet just as he was about to ask if they had met before. With a distorted expression on her face, she screamed out, I came here for a loan, and I will get one somehow, it's not for me, it's for your son, Ronald, or whatever you're called, her revelation that she was actually Marianne, his ghosted ex-fiancée, stopped Ronald in his tracks, he questioned, my son, as he labored to catch his breath, yes, Ronald. You abandoned me while I was pregnant and looted everything. Marianne said, capturing the attention of everyone in the bank I've been left with. Nothing, struggling to survive with our son Joshua, who is sick and in need of medical care, Ronald was paralyzed with fear as he faced the crushing weight of his previous choices and the myriad of possible outcomes, fearing for his job security. He contemplated the picture while thinking about how he had abandoned Marianne and his unborn child, oblivious to the struggles they had endured. After Ronald calmed down, he told the security detail to take Marianne to his office while he apologized and explained himself to the workers and customers, they were in a terrible financial bind, and Marianne broke her heart in his office while explaining their son's ailment, she opened out about her difficulties with depression, her financial hardships, and her troubles during pregnancy, her cries filled the room as she confessed, I even considered adoption because I couldn't provide for him, Ronald stayed motionless struggling with the weight of his mistakes, while Sarah sobbed her. Confession, after calming down, Marianne confronted Ronald head-on, locked eyes with him, pursed her lips, and eventually spoke, so, are you going to help me get a loan, Ronald looked disheveled, he had run his fingers through his hair, making it look untidy, and his restless eyes betrayed his overwhelming sense of guilt over things that had happened in the past, a final, no, I can't do that came out of him as he looked down, you have to, excuse me, I need to finish, Ronald interjected, gesturing with a raised finger, getting loans here is difficult, even for the staff, but I have a good salary, I'll pay for everything, the years of child support I missed and everything else from now on, Marianne nearly dropped her jaw as she exclaimed really, just like that, after ghosting me, yeah, I was a fool back then, Marianne, I can't change that, I can't change how you lived back then, but I can do something now, I can help with our son, said Ronald. What is he like, he must be five or four, Marianne asked. He's already five years old and absolutely incredible, he's incredibly courageous, even in those terrifying hospitals, Marianne said, her frustration fading as she spoke about their son, Ronald paid close attention while they persisted in speaking, subsequently, he fulfilled his commitment by covering Joshua's medical expenses, to his relief he was able to keep his position at the bank. He made a solemn vow to never again leave Marianne and their son homeless by securing an apartment for 
Then in promising to pay all of their bills, they went through a dramatic upheaval when Marianne secured a steady job and Joshua's health began to improve, Ronald and Marianne never got back together romantically and didn't get along very well, but their son brought them together, Ronald wanted to be with Joshua because, conflicted as he was with his ex-partner, he knew he had to be strong for his child. What lessons does this narrative teach us, it is very unacceptable to ghost people. For the sake of both people involved, it's best to end a relationship in an open and honest manner, show respect at all times, nobody at the bank, including Ronald, knew that Marianne was the mother of the manager's child and the ex-fiancé of his current boyfriend, they treated her badly because of her smell and appearance, that's all about he first story and now let's watch another similar story. The discovery that the millionaire's widow lived in a rundown trailer shocked them. Investigators Myra, Ethan Jenkins's widow, found out after his passing that Carl Ferguson, his most recent business partner, would get his whole wealth, she described being forced to live in such conditions, and her children would not stop fighting about it, they eventually found something shocking, Carl Ferguson expressed his condolences to Myra at Ethan Jenkins' burial, recognizing the deep loss felt by the community. While it had started out small, Ethan had grown into a major player in their Oregon. Town with his flourishing apparel company, initially employed as a seamstress, Myra eventually became an essential cog in the company's expansion will, sharing a key role with Ethan. Ethan tragically passed away at the age of 82, leaving Myra and their three children, Marcus, Alexandra, and Johnny, to mourn his loss. Myra grudgingly granted Carl Ferguson's unexpected requests about the inheritance after he informed her of them during the funeral, a few weeks down the road, when planning. How to divide up Myra's assets, her kids were caught unawares by Ethan's will, which left most of his possessions, including her house, to Carl Ferguson, protesting obstinately, Johnny questioned the lawyer and emphasized his parents' labor in acquiring the property, expressing his outrage, it simply doesn't make sense, Alexandra interrupted, firmly grasping her brother's shoulder to calm him down. Not even looking up at Mr. Ferguson could reassure Marcus that something was wrong, he was too. Preoccupied with his thoughts to speak, they were reluctant to get into the apparel company in the first place, but they couldn't see giving it up to a partner, Marcus noticed the dissatisfaction among his other executives as he discreetly devised a strategy, Myra, meantime, mourned the loss of her husband and sobbed softly, since she lived alone, her affinity to the house had faded, and she was considering selling it. It seemed unfair, though, Mr. Rothstein informed the siblings, I'm sorry. For your distress. But this is the will Mr. Jenkins and I drafted, despite the siblings' persistent protests, Marcus asked, okay, Mr. Rothstein, could you please provide us with more information regarding the will, he was already aware of who would get the house, Marcus turned to Mr. Ferguson while Mr. Rothstein kept reading, we will respect our father's wishes, but could our mother possibly keep the house, he asked. Looking forward to hearing back, despite the unpredictability of the circumstance, Mr. Ferguson reiterated his commitment to Ethan's decision very well, Marcus responded calmly, we'll assist our mother in relocating and retrieving our inheritance, are we finished here, are you crazy, Johnny said, his annoyance plainly showing, before escorting their mother out, Marcus put an end to his words by saying they could talk about it later, they spent the next several days retrieving their possessions from the mansion, but they were taken aback by Myra's choice to live in the trailer, mom, come on, you're going home with me, Alexandra adamantly stated, offering suggestions to make her mother feel more at ease, Myra, though, stayed firm, the woman's unexpected statement caught her children off guard, they hadn't seen the trailer in years, no, your father left it to me, and that's where I'll stay, take me there, she said, to try to persuade their mother, Johnny said, it's probably dilapidated, echoing his sister's attitude, you don't have to live there just because, you've been forced out of your house, yes, I am compelled to, your father insisted on it for some strange reason, he coerced me into it, additionally, that Ferguson man is essentially dragging me to live there, Myra revealed, her unwavering determination stunning her children, Alexandra was unsuccessful in her second attempt to persuade her mother to go, no, mom, we're going to my house now, she said, but Myra was unwavering and would not budge no matter how much her daughter probed, you can't do that, I am obligated to live here, your father wanted me to, Myra sobbed as she felt the crushing weight of her decision, 
After guiding her to the worn-out bed, Alexandra sat down next to her to offer moral support, despite her mother's stubbornness, which she failed to comprehend, she felt compelled to support her, as Alexandra embraced her mother closely, she softly pleaded, fine, but we're going to clean this place up immediately and make it pretty, will you let me do that, at the mansion? Johnny and Marcus patiently awaited the arrival of the moving truck to collect their possessions, Carl Ferguson tried to come out as friendly with them, it was at last a chance that Marcus could seize, he said, oh, I'm going to go get something from my room right away, while giving Johnny a knowing smile, Johnny interrupted Carl and asked, Mr. Ferguson, are you planning to expand our parents' business, to refocus Carl's attention? Instead of going to his room, Marcus walked into the home. He went into his dad's office, hoping Ferguson didn't know about the floor safe, a secret that Marcus, as the eldest son, knew all too well, after swiftly opening it and snatching up as many papers as he could, he locked the safe and hurried back to his room to retrieve the last box he had deliberately left behind. Stepping outside to greet the arrival of the moving truck, Marcus declared, we're ready. All the while keeping a poker face, they helped load everything onto the truck, said goodbye. To Ferguson, who looked happy, and left, after meeting at Marcus's residence, they found what they were looking for among the paperwork, we've got them, Johnny shouted, his fist pumped in protest, well, we don't know that yet, Marcus cautioned phoning his lawyer, members of their father's executive team were just as perplexed by the new owner as they were when they met with them, the cops were eventually involved. The trailer was cleaned for days by Myra, Alexandra, and her children, the wallpaper was altered. New objects were purchased, flowers were added, and everything was arranged with great care, the location wasn't terrible after all, but it was still much inferior than the mansion, they bought a lovely set of patio furniture and relaxed on it, watching Alexandra's children play in the water, it's not so bad, Myra told her daughter with a smile, you know, honey, I was actually considering that living in that house was too much, I wanted to sell it, give you guys most of the money, and find something smaller, maybe this is why he only left me this, Alexandra emphasized that their house was loved by all the kids, even if she could see her mother's point of view, breathing in the sea air, Alexandra pondered, I still can't quite grasp dad's actions, you both worked so hard, I know we all have different careers, but I think we could have managed to keep the business running, we'll never know now, her thoughts wandered to the ocean, her offer of additional tea came after a few moments of thought, their time spent outdoors near the trailer was interrupted when Alexandra's phone rang, hey, Johnny, she responded, while her brother was on the phone, Myra scowled at her daughter and sat up straight in her chair, what's happening, asked the elderly woman in a timid voice, Alexa silenced her mother and listened intently as her brother asked if she might invite Johnny to spend time here, she leaped to her feet and chuckled at last, oh my god, are you serious, are you serious, she shouted, her body trembling with frustration, she finally got her mother to get up from the floor when she hung up the phone, mom, you can get your house back, what, it was all a big con, Alexandra exclaimed, her voice filled with triumph as she embraced her mother once more, while Myra and her daughter had a chuckle, she still had no idea what was going on, honey, I'm glad you're happy, but can you explain better, she asked, mom, Carl Ferguson was in cahoots with the lawyer, and they made a fake will that never left him anything, she told us Marcus and Johnny found the real will, and he said something about the other executives, vowing that dad didn't trust Ferguson that much, there's going to be a police investigation, those people are going to jail, Myra placed her palm on her mouth as she pondered, oh my, why would Mr. Rothstein do something like that, he's going to get disbarred, the authorities were able to apprehend Carl and Mr. Rothstein after several months of investigation, the horror was over, but now Myra could go home since the truth about what they did had finally come out, Myra was reluctant to return to her mansion, even though Ethan had originally intended for her to receive half of his land and the remainder to be divided among his children, her children saw the potential in selling the house and purchasing the land on which the trailer stood, Myra was able to retain the trailer while they constructed a lovely little house for her on that plot of land, she came to the realization that she had fallen in love with the place even though her husband had always forbidden her to reside there, being by the water was a favorite pastime of her grandkids, after Johnny and the executives who had been faithful to them chose to switch careers, Johnny took over management of the apparel company, Myra had no remorse for what transpired, 
and everything appeared to be going swimmingly, Myra teased her daughter Alexandra, saying, maybe this was meant to be, during a family cookout. Don't be silly, mom, that man wanted to steal everything you created after years of work, scoffed her daughter, absolutely, but perhaps destiny had other plans for me than to reveal to me that I had to reside near the water, Myra said, continuing to smile at her daughter, the younger woman finished setting the outdoor table and then murmured, fate is weird, as she grabbed the plates, Myra was completely in agreement. What lessons does this narrative teach us, have faith in your children, and share your intentions with them. Before making the will, Ethan Jenkins ought to have spoken to his children, being forthright in discussing these issues with your children will help you avoid being caught unawares by a fraudulent will, Myra did not feel remorse for moving to the old trailer, even though she had been misled and felt compelled to do so, she thought she had been led to the house she would come to love by some cosmic hand, above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.